having everyone. Hopefully you can hear me in this background noise. It's not gonna take over today, but give me the raw background of the new drop sheet or the zodiac backdrop with the touch of my friend Lady who um, made the new signs. Let me turn it around. Yeah, big construction outside. So hopefully you all can hear me. I'll talk louder, but yes. We have the ruling signs here. We have all the transitions here. Uh, and we got the planets. Um, I'm gonna switch this up so we can recreate the opposition that had happened yesterday with the full moon and Leo. We'll start there. We have the houses for life's purposes. I haven't added them on here yet because they're a bit big and I need to trim them down. And then we are missing one of our favorite planets, Jupiter. So I have to re-improvise that that'll get fixed. And then we have all the different elements and modes all around. So y'all stay tuned. We'll be updating this and using this from here on out. Thanks again to Lady. And y'all stay tuned, here we go. All right, so as I explained we'll be talking about the opposition we're starting with this so the sun was at 16 degrees yesterday i'm gonna leave it at 17 because i only have one 16 in the color for fixed sun so it's fixed air for aquarius the sun is in aquarius it's still aquarius season we're halfway through over halfway through and the moon was opposing it which means the opposite signs aquarius and leo which is covered up a bit here uh, the fixed fire we're opposing which creates a full moon especially when that they're the same degree so as I just explained I don't have two of these degree numbers so I just use the next one for the Sun which is where the Sun is today the Sun moves a degree every day the moon moves uh, every two days so that is why the moon is already in Virgo as of now it is Tuesday February the 7th all right guys I try to get creative and I made a um, post yesterday that I really didn't like because these pictures are really light but this is the full moon in Leo because that's about being creative dramatic stepping into your brave we will talk all about that so that is why I use the colors because Leo is a fire sign and the full moon is usually you know dark but it illuminates the darkness at nighttime and it's opposing the sun in Aquarius. And I put the little blue full moon in the middle of the sun, the Aquarius symbol, and the word aqua. So let's just talk about that, but I did want to show you the creation that I made with my daughter because Leo is definitely about being childlike and doing fun things with children. So we painted. All right, guys, I'm going to definitely speak loud, as I said again, and probably put some background noise in this. But really quick, full moon and Leo opposing the sun. We also have what's called a T-square, because hopefully you can see here. And I did make a painting, but I put the wrong symbol. I put the trine symbol instead of the square with a T. Because a T-square is when there's tension going on between the fixed signs, the same element, okay? So all the fixed signs are yellow. Uranus is the one that is squaring the moon and the sun as it is in um, a fixed sign as well. The only other thing is on a fixed sign in Scorpio, which is the last fixed sign, is the south node, which is going with the north node in Taurus, but they're not in the second beacon. As you can see, Uranus is about 15 degrees. The moon is at 16. The sun was at 16, we put 17. They're all fairly close in degrees. The second degree, I'm sorry, the second deacon is between 10 and 19 degrees. So after we have the opposition in the full moon, we'll speak on that in a bit. We'll start with the T-square. So as you can see, they're kind of making what would be a triangle, or would be a square, I'm sorry, but they're making it in a triangle because the fixed signs are all very close. It's not a total square because of um, Scorpio not being in the same degree with everything else that is squaring. T-squares bring significant, um, kind of like trines, 
I put opposite shape, kind of like trines, that are um, going to continuously make change. The nodes, again, are in Scorpio and Taurus at seven degrees. They retrograde, which is why I have the retrograde sign on the south node because I don't have another seven for the south node. But um, they're both in seven degrees. They retrograde going backwards into zero degrees and then the nodes will change to the next signs, which is Aries and Libra, the sign before Scorpio and the sign before Taurus. That will happen in July of this year, 2023. The nodes have been in Scorpio. The nodes last for 18 months going retrograde motion. The nodes last for 18 months, so we started in Scorpio and Taurus at the beginning of January 2022. So we've had significant changes with fixed signs. Anyone who has any placements in Scorpio, Taurus, Leo, and Aquarius are significantly getting some energies that have been transforming. Um, we heard and talked about this before. Long story short, the eclipses that happened in Scorpio season of 2022, the full moon in uh, Taurus opposing the sun in Scorpio, and then the new moon in Scorpio conjunct the sun in Scorpio. Then we had eclipses back in Taurus season of 2022, which is when they kind of first started. They started in 2021 too, because they'll continue to go like right before we'll have an eclipse in uh, Aries or Libra. I have to get my notes for that one, but when they switch in uh, when the nodes switch in um, July of this year, we'll still have another Scorpio Taurus eclipse. And again, eclipses bring big changes, especially in whatever signs, whatever modes they're in. So we're talking about the fixed signs. And the last one will be in Scorpio season of 2023 this year. And then we'll move on with the Aries and Libra energy, which we'll talk about when that comes. So that is the T-square. And just a bit more about the T-square before we go back into the opposition of the full moon and, and the sun. Um, T-squares, if you notice, especially in a full moon T-square, <laughs> they can be tough. They can be, um, with Uranus being the planet of rebellion and um, unexpected happenings and innovation, um, it's being ruled. Uranus actually rules Aquarius. So, just quickly about the ruling planets, if you can see here. So, the moon is involved in this, and we're going over the planets. The moon is our sensitivity, nurturing, and functioning mood. So, how we react and our emotions. And the moon rules cancer. This is where it's at home. We're also talking about <clears throat> Uranus, which rules Aquarius, as you can see. Traits or originality, innovation, shock value. So, like I said unexpected events it also rules uniqueness so get unique be innovative with this new energy coming in the last thing of course and the first thing of course that we should have went over is the sun the sun rules leo which is why it was so significant leo represents heart leo represents bravery leo represents childlike like i said um energy um doing things with children or as if you are a child tapping back into your childlike energy if you're an adult now like myself um doing something creative being expressive those are all the things of leo and that's why it's ruled by the sun because the sun has traits of courage self-expression and boldness okay so with all those traits there's going to be tension there's going to be a push and a pull if you are able to um, take those changes and run with them, you'll do great. If it's hard for you, it'll still happen, but you'll still do great because greatness comes when there's eclipses, even tough T-squares, when there's oppositions with any modes. And again, we're talking about the fixed modes. Here I have them in yellow, so you can see. All right, let's get back and wrap this up about the full moon. All right, guys, I'm going to talk as I read over this. Again, shout out to Astro Butterfly. I just wanted to make sure I didn't miss anything. I studied this for a couple of days, and it was a lot, and it was so important. But let's just show you the words. You can pause to read and look it over yourself. But I wanted just to touch on some really important things. So she sends these out to me with every significant transit. Um, 
So we are on February 7th right now, but on the 5th, which was Sunday, we have a full moon and 16 degrees of Leo. So I showed you that. It is exactly square Uranus and Taurus, which we talked about as well. A full moon is a celestial act of bouncing two opposite forces. The full moon in Leo comes to illuminate the archetype of its opposite sign, Aquarius, and find a creative synthesis between the two. So we use the circle and the dot, which I'd used in my picture at the very beginning of this video. The sun, which is Leo's ruling planet, is the symbol of a circle with a dot in the middle. The dot inside circle is our identity and makes us different from others. Aquarius is the circle without the dot. Imagine being part of a circle. The circle is a safe place for everyone included. No one is more special than another. Now imagine you are part of a safe circle and you slap, you step inside, why did I say slap? You step inside the circle. This is a healthy Leo energy. Your like-minded group has you back. So remember, Aquarius, I, didn't, I failed to mention this, Aquarius also has to deal with groups. So you're unique and you're an individual, but you find your group that will accept you for the way you are. We need this safe Aquarius space to be ourselves. We can't be ourselves and express ourselves the Leo way, right? If we don't, if we feel unsafe and we feel like we don't belong. If we're not part of a community, we need to be a part of a group that has our back. That's why Leo needs Aquarius. And of course, Aquarius needs Leo too. The circle without the dot is just a circle, a space of infinite creativity, of infinite potential, but a space where nothing happens. At the same point, when the time is right, we need to take the lead and step back into the circle. But how do we do that? Full moon and Leo, thesis, antithesis, and synthesis. So this is really important. I'm just gonna scroll slowly through it, but I really wanted to get to where we talk about Leo versus Aquarius in the opposition. So hopefully you got to read that part. And now we are at Leo versus Aquarius. Aquarius, again, we are the Aquarius, we are in Aquarius season, which is why the sun is in Aquarius. The group, social trends, objective experience, head, okay? It says head, even though the typical um, Aquarius part is your shins. It's the second to last sign, the final sign in the zodiac is Pisces, which is your feet. So each sign has a body part representation, but this one is speaking on the head because we're talking about brain, we're talking about individuality. Leo, the opposite sign from Aquarius, becomes our antithesis. The individual versus the group. Creativity versus trends. Subjective experience versus objective experience. Heart versus head. So yes, Leo is the heart, um, has the heart body part for the zodiac signs. After we understand both thesis and antithesis, we can get into synthesis. The group versus the individual. So the group is Aquarius, the individual is um, Leo. So groups cannot exist without individuals, of course. A group where no one takes the lead, no one steps in, and no one has something to share and to give becomes stale. Trends versus creativity. Great artists are people who touch a sensitive chord in the collective site, have a unique ability to pick up on trends and understand where society is heading towards. They are not necessarily the most original creators, but are some of the earliest adopters. On the other hand, if we follow the crowd too much, our work becomes boring and ultimately obsolete. We need a creativity injection from Leo. Head versus heart. When the head completely takes over, we need to get back to the heart. So I'm from reading fast because I don't wanna bore you and I wanna kinda of get this over with so we can move on to the week. Full moon and Leo, something's got to give. Let's skip down to some of these questions. How do we actually embody a full moon and Leo? The answer is not what you think. Aquarius, that head. The answer is not even what you feel, Leo, the heart. The answer is what you actually do, Uranus and Taurus. So that means unexpected energy, innovation, like we spoke on in all things individuality, but in the Taurus way. So Taurus way, really quick, is security, stability, and because Uranus is um, unexpected energy, it's very tough for Taurus being a fixed sign at that, being fixed in about one thing and especially a lot of these fixed signs all of our fixed signs are about control <laughs> it's very uncomfortable at 15 degrees uranus is the apex of the full moon t-square in a t-square the tension of opposite sun and moon is released to the planet at the apex 
Uranus. So we talked about this T-square and I get a little bit more into it. Leo, Aquarius, and Taurus are fixed signs, extremely stubborn, as I just said. The goal is to preserve the status quo, not initiate change. Yet a T-square is like a pressure cooker. Yes, you can hold on to tension for a while, but not indefinitely. Something's got to give. Uranus and Taurus is a call for authenticity. What's worth doing even if you fail? What's worth going for? Because deep inside, you know it's the only way to live. What would you do if you act from your deepest values and truth? So all in all, thank you Astro Butterfly for that. Hopefully you all got the gist of what this full moon is about and fix signs. Let's get prepared for more change. Peace out on the full moon in Leo.